Hello and welcome. With the words, goodbye America, you are not the country that I love, the Iraq war's most visible protester ended her two-year campaign. After her soldier son was killed in Iraq, American mother Cindy Sheehan set up Camp Casey near George Bush's private ranch in Crawford, Texas, as a demonstration against U.S. military policy. Sheehan founded Gold Star Families for Peace and lobbied heavily for President Bush to meet with her and explain why the U.S. went to war. Well, the media soon made the 49-year-old protester the face of America's anti-war movement. But at what personal cost? Her family fragmented, her friends became distant, and eventually even some in America's peace movement turned away from her one-woman campaign. Significantly, on Memorial Day in the U.S., Shihan made the announcement that her son, Casey, did die, indeed die for nothing. On today's show, we asked Cindy Shihan, was it all worth it? Does protesting in America achieve anything? And what's next for her? And don't forget, we take your phone calls and mobile phone texts on this program. The numbers are there at the bottom of your screen. Joining us now from Sacramento in California is Cindy Sheehan. Cindy, it's good to welcome you back uh, on the show, but I'm sorry to have to ask you, why end your protest now? What's uh, prompted it, and was it effectively all for nothing? Well, I think that um, we have been very successful up to a certain point, and we changed America, America's um, view of the war. It, the country's now overwhelmingly against George Bush and against the war. We tried to have an impact on the Democratic Congress to have them work as hard for peace as we've been working hard for peace. Last week, it's evident that that um, is failing. And so I think I just came to a brick wall. Uh, I came to a brick wall physically. You know, my body can't handle this anymore, can't handle the constant traveling, the constant arrests, and um, you know, the, all the sacrifices I've made. I think we've and come to a brick wall in right. our activism. So Cindy, we have to just, I think, come from a different direction. I'll ask you more about details on what you've been talking about there, but let me ask you first. Now, you, you say you didn't do it in a hurry, that you did really think about this for some time. And so, you know, I, I wonder what was, the, what was the point that turned it for you? What, was, what prompted the final decision to be made? Well, it was the vote last week when um, the Democrats gave George Bush another blank check to wage this mayhem that he's waging in the Middle East. They give him more money and they give him carte blanche. He could be invading Iran next. And the Democrats are so weak, even though they're majority, they're so weak, they can't even force the president's hand on this. There's so many things they could have done besides giving him a blank, giving him a blank check. And then when I left the Democratic Party, I think I did that on Saturday, I put out an, um, a letter to the Democratic Congress that I'm cutting all my ties, even the you know thin ties I still had with the party. And then I got started being attacked heavily by the so-called left. And they were calling me the same names that the right's been calling me for the past three years since, I, since my son was killed and I started this. And I just thought, you know, like you said, why have I sacrificed my entire life Right. And I think it's time to go home and regroup. Now you did, uh, you criticized some key Democrats. I mean, for example, you know, uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, you called Senator Hillary Clinton a power monger. You've resigned from the Democratic Party, as you mentioned. Now, are there any politicians you feel could do the job, could do really what you hoped they would do? Well, you know, there's um, still very, some very courageous people in Congress who have always stood up and stood against it. Like, uh, and they were doing it from their principles, not for any kind of political posturing, like Congresswoman Lynn Wolsey from California, Congressman Dennis Kucinich from Ohio, Barbara Lee, Maxine Waters from California. So there are um, a lot of courageous politicians that have been that way since the beginning. You know, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama walked onto the Senate floor, voted no long after the bill had already been defeated in the Senate. So to me, that's just political posturing. They're just political hacks. You know, um, very few people in Congress care about the loss of human life and the destruction that's being caused. Now, I interestingly enough, in your, your uh, resignation letter or your farewell commentary, if you, if you like, you're quite harsh and damning of America. And you say that uh, the country's on a path to becoming a fascist corporate wasteland. I mean, that, that sounds a little harsh, actually, doesn't it? Um, well, you know, sometimes the truth is harsh, and, you know, I've had to face up to a lot of truths since my son was killed, and the corporations run our country, Riz, the, 
the corporate media, the war machine, the people who profit off of war, the oil companies, the um, lobbyists on K Street in Washington, they're the ones who are running our country. And unless sta America stands up and says, we want our country back, we want a true representative republic where our representatives represent us and not the corporations, not the special interests, we're not going to ever have a country that we can be proud of again. Well, here we have a, a caller on the line. As you know, Cindy, we have callers from around the world. And Khalid's in Saudi Arabia with a question or comment. Go ahead, Khalid. Uh, thank you. Uh, I have actually three questions. One is uh, uh, yesterday another uh, UN resolution under Section 7 has been passed in Lebanon. Uh, are we going to see more American troops dying in Lebanon too? Uh, this is uh, number one. Uh, number two is why? What does the why does uh, what does the lady think the reason behind uh, invading Iraq since all you know, uh, other reasons that were mentioned before the war has uh, proven to be a lie. Uh, okay. And the third thing, she already lost a son. What, how about the other, other American public who, uh, who did not lose anybody now, but the way it is going, there are more troops in the Middle East, right. more deaths. Khalid, Khalid, let me, okay, so, I mean, one thing that uh, what comes out from what Khalid's saying, he's talking about Lebanon, he's talking about, um, you know, other people still losing um, their lives in, in the region. And I wonder, you know, at one point, and in relation to what Khalid's asked there, let me go back to something you said when you were on the show back on March the uh, 15th with me, Cindy, and you talked about, you know, the, the, um, the issue of power uh, of the people. And this is what you had to say at the time. People power in my country is the only thing that's going to change anything. George Bush has uh, made the courts irrelevant. Uh, Congress has made itself irrelevant. So the people need to take to the streets to change. And it, really, in the United States, that's the only time we've had true and relevant and lasting change is when the people have gotten fed up and, and taken to the streets and protest. So there, uh, Cindy, in, in relation to what you said there and what Khalid is asking about, something being done, things still not really uh, being resolved, do you think people still have the power to create any change to stop the troops, uh, more troops going over and perhaps bring the troops back? Well, you know, we have seen overwhelmingly in the United States that people disapprove of this war, disapprove of George Bush, but we don't see the numbers of people on the streets. They, it seems like I said in my letter, America cares more about who's the next American idol than who's dying in the Middle East. And until America, the average grassroots American, understands that what we're doing in the Middle East affects everybody personally, and it's a moral issue, you know, not just not a political issue, it is a moral issue, then they're not going to take to the streets to have it to have it stop and that's very unfortunate I, I think America doesn't realize the stake we have in what George Bush is doing in the Middle East we have uh, Emery on the line from London so let's get a question in there Emery what would you like to ask Cindy hey Emery uh, hey uh, Ritz uh, Cindy uh, I, I guess my question is as, as an expat American living in London right now um, as someone who saw millions of people demonstrating against the war in New York and all across the country before the war even happened, completely unprecedented in the history of anti-war protests. Um, once this war, this, this Vietnam for our generation is over, what is it can we do in the future to prevent something like this from happening, from a small number of people who are launching these giant wars of aggression, which hardly anyone in the country really wanted? What is it we can do? Okay. In the future, to prevent this from happening again. Cindy, we've seen, you know, as uh, as uh, Emery's suggesting there, you know, this is uh, the Vietnam of this time. What stops it happening again? Not, it seems lessons weren't learned from the Vietnam War, according to what he's saying. Well, absolutely. I think that um, this time we, you know, it's a it's a tragedy of humanity that we don't learn from history that these histories keep on repeating themselves over and over and over again. We forgot the people who died in Vietnam. We forgot the Vietnamese, the people that were destroyed in their country that was destroyed. We forget it because the system is set up to make us forget it. To, it's an infotainment. It's an MTV generation. You know, it's uh, so many distractions that you don't think about um, what's truly important. America is very comfortable 
Um, and it's, a, you know, it's really ironic that America is so comfortable when we, this country, has made so many other people in the world so very uncomfortable. So I think um, that what we need to do is, like I said before, cut the corporate ties between our government and the corporations. Benito Mussolini said that fascism should be called corporatism because it's the marriage of state and corporations. And we have to stop letting our children volunteer to be involved in this corporate military imperialism of the United States. There's very many, there's very um, many good grassroots organizations that are working against recruitment in the military. We have to cut um, the lobbyists, their influence over Washington, D.C., and we have to stop, um, you know, right. patronizing S such, such places as Exxon, um, who Cindy? have been um, pr profiting off of our children's death. I'm sorry to interrupt you there, but we have Jack on the line waiting also to ask something from Rome. So, Jack, thanks for your patience. What would you like to ask, Cindy? Okay, first Hello. of all, I want to, my name is Jack Shepard, yes. and I want to announce uh, for history on Al Jazeera, I, I, I am a candidate for the President of the United States on okay. the FEC. So I want to announce an Al Jazeera. Okay, okay. The question is, I have a plan on my website that calls for the Americans withdrawing to five uh, areas and then use as a rapid uh, response. The question is to this lady is, we are here today. That's why I'm running for president. What do we care what happened three, four years ago? It's how, what we do today to help the Iraqi people to get out of the situation. Okay, so, so Jack, uh, Jack let, me, let me get from Cindy, because I mean, obviously, I, I don't doubt, Cindy, you're able to ask in ter answer in terms of military strategy, but let me ask you in terms of what alternatives might come up. Here's an email question that came from Wendy Taylor, and I attached this to Jack's question there. Wendy from Houston, Texas, says the peace movement cannot make progress because as of yet no one has come up with an alternative aside from surrendering to extremists whose goal is to kill anyone who does not agree with their twisted doctrine and their ideo ideology. So Jack was suggesting an alternative there. Wendy is saying here nothing can be done unless there's an alternative. So what alternatives could you suggest? Well, you know, there has been some very good alternative plans presented in my country. One by George McGovern, one by Dennis Kucinich, one by Lynn Woolsey. But, um, and I can't, of course, speak to military strategy, but in answer to Wendy, you know, we've killed almost 700,000 innocent people in Iraq by the invasion and occupation. Do you think that's helping extremism? Do you think that's making friends in America? No, it's not. It's making more enemies. And um, Jack's plan, is that the caller from Rome? Is the name Jack? That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, to, to draw them to different areas, rapid response, that just means death squads, that just means more Iraqi people dying. But I do favor a gradual withdrawal of our troops from the, from the um, populated areas, take them to the borders, secure the borders from, you know, outside influences, help the people of Iraq politically and financially, but not militarily, because that's only making things worse. Close the permanent bases in Iraq. Um, give the Iraqi people back their resources, their oil. Let them rebuild their country. Give them back their jobs. And like I said, help them in any way we can without our military troops there. Let's squeeze in a call from Mohammed in Saudi Arabia. Mohammed, what would you like to ask? Yeah, brother is. Right. Uh, the first comment of mine is for uh, response, second I will go through uh, Cindy. Very quickly, uh, yeah, please. The comment, comment is that, uh, do you consider as a media person that Iraq has become a fishbone in the throat of Bush administration? Second thing, for Cindy, uh, regarding her retirement, does her pack, uh, this uh, movement of peace regarding Bush and all this thing, does she go further after the Bush retirement until she take her as a criminal of war criminal etc she will continue or is there any other person in to take this movement further okay so Cindy I mean just in response to you Mohammed I'm, I'm not really in a position to comment on the media because I want to give our guest time but uh, let me ask Cindy do you feel there's any other action you can take in the future is there any I mean this issue of going to the International Criminal Court has come up a number of times when it comes to George Bush amongst our callers so what, what would you uh, suggest mm -hmm. well you know that it is an international issue of holding him accountable. I think that it's about time that an American president and his uh, cronies like Dick Cheney and the rest of them be held accountable, be tried in a criminal court, and um, have to be punished or have to be held accountable for what they have done. Of course, that's an international issue, and I fully support that. 
And what we are going to do, and what I'm going to pull back and come back as, is to, um, you know, interface with people around the world in, um, you know, peace groups around the world, NGOs around the world, to figure out how we can help people of the world that have been harmed by the United States. Right. And I think one big help would be to hold our leaders accountable. Cindy, looking, looking back on it all, Cindy, and what's happened to you, was it all worth it? I think up to this point, it has been worth it. I think we've made a tremendous difference. If I could go back to April 3rd, 04, and have my son back and live my life differently, I would. But I think that we've done a tremendous service to this country, right. and we're just going to come back and well, see Cindy. how we can uh, be more effective. Well, thank you, Cindy, for being with us. And thank you for being with us. Join us on Monday as we take a look at the growing divide between the more conservative Muslims and the secularists in Turkey as that country heads into elections. Don't forget, if you have any thoughts about pressing issues around the world, send your emails to riz at aljazeera.net. We'll see you next time. The Street Talk is coming up next.